It's great to be with you today. Okay, it's great to be with you today, tonight. Um, I'm beginning to feel like Australia is my second home. This is my ninth trip here in 10 years. So, and each time it's been about a month and I have some wonderful friends and I wanna thank you for inviting me tonight. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my experience with abortion because I had it firsthand. Being lied to and told that it was a good thing and that I would never have to worry about it again. I carry these little set uh, of baby shoes. I hope you can see them. They are pink and sparkly and shiny, but they shouldn't be. They should have mud. They should have a toe hole in the end of the shoe. They should be worn and ugly looking because she played and enjoyed life. But because of a lie, I was told that it's good for women. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it again. I dedicated my life after my abortion to stop other people and to share what happened to me. You see, after my abortion, uh, some of you have heard it before, so I won't go all of it, but they thought after they excreted what they called the tissue, the cells, the abortionist walked right past my bed, right to the head of my bed, put his foot on the rubbish bin, the lip lipped open, and he threw my baby's body, which I saw arms, legs, fingers, toes, into the garbage and let the thud hit and the door slam. It changed my life. That was not tissue. They had not told me that I was five plus months pregnant. They just told me it was cells and guaranteed me that you could take care of it. And I'd never worry about it again, and that's a lie. And I hope that as I travel, I get that message to the girls who are thinking about abortion and those who've had it that there's hope. Because I found that there is hope. For 16 years I felt completely in, unvalidated, unworthy, undesirable, hated myself, hated the world, basically. My family fell apart. Then I found one person, a little old pastor in a very small country t a church, who recognized exactly what I needed, and that was Jesus Christ. I have talked to Muslims, I have talked to Buddhists, I've talked to several other other religions, I'm not here to put them down. I can only tell you my story, and I can tell you that the only answer can, I can give you that I know is sure is Jesus himself. Because I found out in the muck and the mire of all the guilt and shame that I carried for 16 years, it was his arm that reached down and pulled me up and brought me to where I am today. I hope, I pray that I make a difference. But you out there have a responsibility too. Sometimes you just hear someone make a comment or you find out someone has had an abortion. Love on them. They're hurting inside. They may be smiling on the outside with their hair done and their makeup put on. But underneath there's a crush. Even those who are spitting at us and throwing rocks at us as we march, there's a reason they do that. You know why? Because if they stop, they have to admit what they did and they're not willing to face it. So rather than face it, they throw rocks and argue with us. So I hope that you here tonight, your leaders in your group, your leaders in your areas, oh, please understand. Those people need help too. Please understand that people like me need somebody to reach out to them. I've written a book. It has been number one on Amazon a year or so ago. Um, it's being translated right now into Hindi, Hindi in India and eight other languages to be sent around the world. That's not by my hand, that's by God's. But I am offering it tonight for $10, which is about my cost of printing and shipping them over. There will be no profit, really, but if you're interested, it's a great book to share with someone, and I'd be more than blessed to uh, have you purchase one if you want. In the meantime, we need prayer, we need Jesus, we need patience, and we need to show love. Thank you very much.